to our health class and today we will continue to learn on how does the communicable diseases transmit from one person to another. So now let us watch and learn. So now let us understand how does the infection transmit. An infectious agent may be transmitted from its natural reservoir to a susceptible host in different ways and there are different classifications for modes of transmission so here are the different classification it can be direct which is direct contact and droplet spread indirect which is the airborne vehicle borne and vector borne so, direct contact and infectious diseases are commonly transmitted through direct person-to-person -person contact. And transmission occurs when an infected person touches or exchanges body fluids with someone else. And this can happen before an infected person is aware of the illness. Next is the droplet spread. So, the spray of droplets during coughing and sneezing can spread an infectious disease. And you can even infect other person through droplets created when you speak. Since droplets fall to the ground within a few feet, this type of transmission requires close proximity. So, we also have airborne transmission so some infectious agents can travel long distances and remain suspended in the air for an extended period of time and you can catch a disease like measles by entering a room after someone with measles has departed next is the vehicle borne so vehicles that may indirectly transmit an infectious agent include food, water, biologic products such as blood, and for mites or the inanimate objects such as handkerchiefs, bedding, or surgical scalpels. And also, a vehicle may passively carry a pathogen as food or water may carry hepatitis A virus. And lastly is the vector born. So vectors such as mosquitoes, fleas, and ticks may carry an infectious agent through purely mechanical means or may support growth or changes in the agent. And examples of the mechanical transmission are flies carrying shigella on their appendages that may cause diarrhea, fever, and stomach pain. So to understand more about the transmission of infectious diseases, please watch the next video. Transmission occurs through five sequential and cyclical steps. These are, firstly, colonization of a person's skin with transient organisms. Secondly, shedding of those organisms into the environment and onto surfaces surrounding the patient. Thirdly, contamination of healthcare workers' hands when they come into direct contact with either the patient or the patient's environment. Fourthly, survival of contaminating organisms on the healthcare workers' hands. And the fifth and final cyclic step is the subsequent organism transmission from the healthcare worker's hands to another patient or to a different surface or other non-living object. Hand hygiene is successful in reducing transmission because it breaks the chain of infection. So grade 4, communicable diseases spread through contact with an infected person or a contaminated object or an infected animals. So, I hope that you will be careful next time, wherever you are going to, and be clean always so that you will be safe from the germs or 
pathogens that are spreading around us. So, that's the end of our lesson for this week. And thank you for watching. Goodbye!